Morgan, can you give us your full name, where you were born, and what you did as a youngster? As a youngster, uh, Morgan Daniel Axelson. I was born in Jerome, Idaho. My whole family's from Williston, though. Um, as a youngster, uh, I guess more or less we spent a lot of time, I guess, in the mountains in Idaho and stuff. And then we moved out here and it's pretty much fishing, hunting, same old stuff like that. You do a lot of hunting and fishing in Idaho as well? Yep. What do you catch? Trout, perch, like all that kind of stuff. See any snakes there? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people said there's uh, some pretty good sized rattlers around there. Oh yeah. The biggest one he caught was like five foot, five, six foot. Wow. <laughs> any brothers or sisters? Yep, I got two brothers and a sister. I'm the oldest. That makes it three in a row, I believe. <laughs> Good. Um, so, when you guys were young and you got a chance to play together, any particular games that you guys played when you get together or even when you got together with friends? Not really particularly, I guess. More uh, whatever kept us busy outside all the time. So, so I guess like tag, I don't know. Baseball, football, anything like that? Yeah, I play football and stuff. Not really much in baseball, I guess. Okay, good. Um, at what age did you start thinking about getting into the service? No, I guess I've always kind of thought about it. And then when the opportunity came up, I just kind of took it, I guess. Do you have relatives that are in the service? Yeah, my uncle, like both, all my great grandpas and stuff. Okay. Did all that... the way from World War II up to now. Okay, did that play a part in your decision to... Uh... No, not really. I guess not really a big impact. Okay. I didn't, some of them I really didn't even know until after I deployed and came and they're like, hey, well, this happened. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> thanks for the heads up. Yeah. So, uh, where did you do basic training? Fort Leonardwood, Missouri. Okay. I did a OSIT, so it's like I did everything in one shot. Okay. The, the first day that you signed up to go into the service, what was that feeling like? I guess, I don't know, it was kind of, it was a very long day. <laughs> were, were you nervous, excited, scared? Well, I, I guess a little bit of, well, I guess a little bit of everything, I guess. You don't know what's going to happen. Okay. You know, you and know. did you have a delayed entry where you had a, a little bit of a time before you actually just, got in? I just had a few months, so I signed up my senior year of high school, and then I had to wait till I graduated to leave. Then I left, went to basic, and then I pretty much deployed within a year after that. Tell us what basic training was like for you. <laughs> Enduring. It was very... Um, I guess I don't really know how to describe it. It was very informational. You know, it helps you really figure out who you are as an individual. And uh, it teaches you a lot otherwise. You know, it makes you grow up really fast. Were you in pretty good shape when you went in? Oh yeah, I was in pretty good shape. Uh, I think that's definitely a must anymore to go down. Um, for all the, for the combat MOSs, I guess it's kind of, they actually test you now, so you have to meet a certain standard before you can even go. Were you out for any sports in high school? Yeah, wrestling and football. Okay, so wrestling definitely would put you in good shape for that. Yeah, I was top 15 in the nation. Wow, at what weight? 135. Wow. So, obviously you're not 135 right now, a little bit bigger. Did that happen from when you went in the service and you got bigger? Man, I was even bigger when I first got back. I was like 185 or so. Okay. And I've had a couple of shoulder surgeries since then, so I kind of shrunk back down. Okay. Shoulder surgeries from wrestling injuries? Well, I started it, yeah, and then went into, eventually escalated into Army and life and stuff like that. So, do you remember any of your instructors in basic training? Oh, yeah. I remember a few of them. Can you tell us some stories about uh, how you were treated? <laughs> um, there definitely, there's no give, I guess. Um, a lot of my guys, my instructors were very highly qualified, I guess, individuals like Special Forces, Sapper, Rangers. I mean, they're, you know, top of the line type of Joes. Um, yeah, they're just, a lot of times they weren't even like the yelling type, but they would make you feel it. <laughs> did uh, did you have any guys that played jokes or pranks on you guys? There? From the drill sergeant's yeah. perspective? Oh yeah. I used to put a garbage outside our thing every time they'd fill it up with like cookies and stuff just to see if you'd go out there and eat it. <laughs> I set it right outside the door with it propped open so you could just stare at it and yeah. stuff like that. 
Anybody play a, a particular prank on you? No, not really. I kind of minded myself, you know. <laughs> Did you see any that were played on some of your friends that were oh, pretty? Yeah. I always got the shaving cream and like the icy hot stuff, <laughs> sticking people's underwear and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so what years were you in the service and what was your highest rank? Uh, 2009. I'm still currently in the North Dakota National Guard. Um, so I'm E5 right now. I'm going uh, out for promotion for E6. Okay, so um, you're in a position right now that if they needed somebody overseas, you would have to go? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you were in the service, active duty, where were you stationed at? I never made it there because uh, North Dakota was deploying then, so I opted to come back and deploy with the North Dakota National Guard. Okay, so you work with the Guard right now, mm -hmm. and um, if they go, then you go. Yeah. But for right now, as far as the National Guard goes, if anything goes on in the state of North Dakota, then you're, yeah. you're called to do it. Yeah, pretty much. Has there been anything that you've had to do so far since you've been in the Guard? Uh, flood duty a couple times. Um, that's pretty much it, because we're more of a combat-specific MOS. So like a lot of the equipment operators and stuff like that will get called. So if we get called in, then it's kind of like, okay, well, we just need people to fill sandbags or something, you know? Hmm. So you haven't had to go to Iraq or Iran? Uh, I did. I went to Afghanistan 2012, 2013. Okay. That was sort of like, yeah, it was kind of weird because I would have and I went to basic and stuff and then we got told we were deploying. Or I haven't, I knew before we even got the order, basically. So I was like, all right, whatever. I came back and then I was going to start up college because like, well, I might as well get it going. And then it just never happened because then we trained for a year straight and then left. How was it when you stepped off the plane in Afghanistan? It was hot. 135 degrees. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, what was the feeling? How, how were you treated by the people? Well, it's kind of give or take because we were attached, we were the only army company attached to Marines, so it was kind of, we didn't really know what was going to happen when we got there. So some treat you good, some kind of just like, oh, whatever, they're army guys, you know. Did uh, anything bad happen, dangerous happen while you were there? Well, yeah few times. <laughs> Can you tell us about one of them? Um, I don't know. Well, our main job was to find IEDs, essentially. So, I mean, we'd take an occasional hit, you know, every once in a while. We, did have, we had a couple guys out of my squad that were killed one night. That must have been really hard to take. Yeah, it was, it was definitely different. <laughs> it's kind of like every, you're still kind of gung-ho when you get into country, and then once that first contact happens, you're kind of like, you're like, okay, this isn't a game anymore. <laughs> So, um, how hard was it for you to uh, move up in the ranks from when you first got in to where you're at right now? Um, for myself, it's kind of kind of wonky, I guess, how I kind of got up because I would kind of go to E to E4 was not hard at all, and then I left the unit for a while, and then I became an instructor for like two two and a half years. And then I came back and I got promoted as soon as I got back. So, Okay. I probably would have got it earlier if I would have stayed with the unit, but I decided to just leave and get out of it, the atmosphere, I guess, for a while. So as part of the National Guard, is that your primary work then right now, or do you do something in uh, addition to that? In addition, I do that. I'm a division manager for a oil company up here. Okay, so you're busy all the time. Yep, and then, but I'm constantly going to schools and all kinds of stuff. So uh, with the job that you have right now, is there things that you were able to take from your time in the service oh, to be able to help you? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, just, I guess your basic communication, you know, a lot of stuff up here is communicating with people and, and stuff like that. And then being able to lead um, multiple people, I guess, or multiple different leaders and kind of help guide them, you know. So that's a big, big carryover and it's just, Without getting frustrated and mad, it's really easy to lay stuff on the table and go, okay, look, here it is. Here's what we have to do. And then try and plan it from there. So being in the service, you would credit that to helping you mature in life? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, it helped me grow up quite a bit. So now you really didn't have a final day in the service prior to coming to the National Guard that all kind of blended together? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you get at a certain point where you're going to have to step away, what what is that feeling going to be like for you? 
I don't know. I can't even think about it right now. You know, it's kind of weird to think about, I guess. But you know, it's only I only got one or two more terms left, and I'm done, I guess. So, okay. how many uh, how how many years would you be in altogether? Right now, I'm in about ten. Okay. Well, next year will be ten. Yeah. Okay, and then so you have two more two terms. years. Hitches, is that how it works? Or I'm not yeah, sure. There's how six works. years. There's six Each years? thing is six years. So I guess I'd do one full of six and then maybe a couple of twos just to finish it out. Okay, so then you'll basically be in 20 years and then you'll have your retirement with them, correct? Yep. Okay, great. So um, do you belong to any service organization? No, uh, yeah, I'm the senior vice commander of the VFW here. You are? Okay. Yeah. So you know um, Corey? Yep, okay. he's the president. Good or man. the commander, yes. Yeah. Uh, Want to plug the VFW? Uh, what are you, like, so Any, you? Anything that you want to say to help mm -hmm. promote it? Um, I don't know, I guess it's just we're a non-profit organization. Every donation we get usually how it goes to help veterans in some type of way or aspects. You know, like as in like Corey's house just burned like a lot of it set on fire. So we donated money to that or veterans need housing, clothes, all that type of stuff. Great. Morgan, I want to thank you for your service and want to thank you for doing this interview. Yeah, thank you.